a uh, bit pompous of me to uh, create a new name for a philosophy, but I couldn't help myself. I'm very eager to do this one. Uh, should I just uh, do st start off right off the bat with a brief uh, definition of what it is? Yeah, I'm, I'm, first let me just say that I'm very honored to uh, have you here because uh, as far as I know, this is the first time that we've had uh, someone who is, uh, what, the creator of a new philosophy. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited we'll about, about this. That. We'll see. If, yeah, um, it, it's not in myself. In, you know, it's not in my self interest to be humble, but I can't help myself on that either. So, because I, I, as I explain the definition, you'll notice that it has a lot of, uh, you know, subtle but very important differences with existentialism. But it also has a lot of um, uh, similarities with the so-called pre-existentialists like uh, Friedrich Nietzsche. But we'll get into that. Don't worry. Yes, well, I'm really looking forward to this because I know a little, not a lot, about existentialism. And mm -hmm. uh, you gave me a short preview before the show. And uh, I, I will be true to myself and be the skeptic here. And I'll, I'll uh, put your uh, theory to the test as best as I can, uh, uh, Kohei. So, uh, uh, yeah, so why don't you yeah. introduce it however you want. Um, lay out, lay, sure. Give me the lay of the land. All right, all right. So, um. It all started, you know, uh, I've always identified as an existentialist, right? I said it, it was the cool thing, man. It was the thing to be, um, you know, because I've always uh, had the intuition that life had no inherent meaning. So it, it only made sense that you were to make my own. And, you know, re reading through different philosophers, especially the existentialist type, uh, just, finished some, uh, Nietzsche, Nietzsche, just finished a Nietzsche book a week ago. And we're going to read one soon later next year. But um, it, it dawned on me that a lot of the uh, existentialists, and especially those who adopt existentialism today in this day and age, I noticed that we tend to put not as an not a strong emphasis on creating our own meaning as we should, but more reacting to the fact that we don't have an inherent meaning. If that makes sense. We're not doing it for the sake of creating our own meaning. We're not doing it for the sake of creating our own agency, our own destiny, et cetera, et cetera. It's more of a fear response to the fact that, you know, we don't have an inherent meaning. And that's kind of where post-existentialism comes in. And the post-existentialist says, hold on, I agree with you there, fellow existentialist. You say that life has no meaning. Check. You say that, therefore, we should create our own. Check. I re we agree with you there. However, we post-existentialists, we're going to take it one step further, if I may. And we're going to say, whatever meaning you create, it has to be for the sake of that uh, meaning. It, it can't be to uh, cope with uh, your anguish. It can't be to uh, seek anything permanent. It has to be through that and for it. on it, like it, And it has to be the only thing that you're focused on, not not reaction to your anguish like the existentialists do. So really, practically speaking, both the existentialist and the uh, post-existentialist, our actions manifest in the same ways, right? We do the same things. The difference lies in the reasons why we do it. The why we do it makes the difference as to what separates the existentialist from the post-existentialist. Okay, so uh, I'll uh, give you my first reaction, and you'll have plenty of time here to uh, to respond. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm so far a bit skeptical that there's really a, a difference, a distinction between uh, what existentialists uh, are proposing or theorizing versus what you're theorizing. Um, I'm I'm just not convinced yet, and and you'll have plenty of time to convince me here, um, but I'm not convinced yet mm -hmm. that. Uh, that, that there's a difference because uh, so let's talk about uh, I'm going to use Sartre as an example of a of a of a you know French existentialist. So he talks about actually three specific um, emotions that uh, that uh, are fundamental to his theory. The first is forlornness, and forlornness is specifically the realization that there's no God and there's um, no a priori objective morality, and uh, mm -hmm. Uh, and we are c condemned. Man is condemned to be free. Uh, so it, it's this, this almost the shock uh, that we feel when we uh, realize, oh my God, wh what if there is no God? 
And, and what if there is no uh, objective morality and we're free? It's this, it's this, this openness, this, this freedom uh, that creates this huge space. Um, but mm -hmm. it also uh, is a uh, potentially disturbing because of the freedom. And uh, yes, so, uh, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll let you respond. Uh, well, let me, let me just say this, though. So if, if that's what we're talking about here, if I suddenly come to this realization that there, there is no objective morality, that there is no God, that, that I'm free, how does post-existentialism change? How is that dis distinct from this existentialist mm -hmm. realization, this existential realization okay. that I'm free? Okay. Yeah. So you're asking how our approach to the realization right. that we're free is any different from theirs. Right. Okay. Let me answer that. Uh, before we have to uh, really uh, uh, describe what, how the existentialists do and how the post-existers do so that we can compare and contrast. So um, you say how uh, there's no a priori, there's no objective morality, so we're free. Okay. Um, but then if we're condemned to, you know, condemned to be free, all that jazz, to be that way, and if we're... Uh, acting because of that then what that means is there's still in the way that kind of um a priority there because you're acting as if it's there you're right what what i mean is um if i if even if it's gone but you're still acting in response to it then it's it's it's, it's, it's in a way still there you're 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 reacting in presence to it if if um if you disappear tomorrow and I, I, uh, my actions are dependent on that, then I am still acting as if your presence is still there because you are still influencing me. Therefore, you're not really free, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying and the analogy. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to, to relate that analogy um, back to the question of forlornness. So uh, uh, if, if I... Um, have come to the realization, however that happens, whether it's suddenly or over time, right? I come to the mm -hmm. realization um, that um, that I'm free, that uh, that uh, the morality and ethical systems are are not really a priori, that they're just superimposed, and, yeah. and I don't I don't accept those anymore uh, as objective reality. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. accept God anymore, uh, and mm -hmm. uh, and and it's not all joy because it's also a burden right because it's like mm -hmm. sartre says mm -hmm. manner is condemned to be free it's like oh my god yeah. what do i do with this freedom it's very scary uh i'm i'm, I'm condemned to to make to picking up the pieces <laughs> everything's fallen apart everything i used to believe is has fallen apart all the moral codes yeah, and the religious beliefs make your own you're kind of pressured to make your own, but you're not ready to make your own uh -huh. because you're acting in response to the fact that uh you, you feel the uh uh emotional angst okay so okay so what, the problem okay so you're saying that a reaction to the forlornness uh, mm -hmm. uh, is not what post existentialism uh, existentialism your theory would um, would would advocate so what do you advocate so if I come to this okay. uh, you're not de denying forlornness you're not denying nope. th that I could be in this nope. state where I realize there's no God and there's no uh, a priori objective morality and it's it's scary it's free and scary mm -hmm. What yeah. would I do if I were adopting a post-existentialist approach? What would I do yeah. with that? What would I do? So, so the first thing uh, uh, you, uh, you have to accept is completely natural, right? It's completely natural to be, we call it like a rebellion stage, right? Um, Nietzsche would call it the lion stage in the uh, camel, lion, child analogy from this book, Zestra. But it's basically when you are... Uh, retroactively uh, responding to it. And, you know, the post-existentialist says, you know, it's completely natural. What we also say is we can't stop there. Uh, what we have to do is we have to, what I call, transcend that conflict, right? So we have to um, fully uh, move beyond it. And there's two ways of uh, being that way. Um, there's, uh, you can, you can fight against it and therefore win, which would amount to uh, becoming completely okay, right? Completely accepting of it, and you do it anyways. You, 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 
you do what you you create your own meaning, but you do it in the context of it doesn't make a difference if there's an objective or non-objective meaning. So that that whole realization doesn't affect you, or or you accept that you can't you can't do that. It's just you you, you just don't have it in you, and you surrender the fight, but you do it without resentment. You do it without bitterness, and you say you know. There's no objective morality. There's no objective inherent meaning. Uh, I'm I'm not strong enough to make my own, but I'm gonna very peacefully and gracefully surrender to that. And in either case, whether you overcome it or whether you succumb to it, you act in a way where it's not in conflict, right? It's not re in rebellion. And once you transcend that rebellion, you've entered the post-existentialism phase because now you're really free to do what you want so really um if you if you live your life even though it could cost your life but you do it anyways that's a post-existentialism uh manifestation post-existentialism if you wholeheartedly laugh out loud that's post-existentialism it's the it's the why it manifests. It's not what manifests because I could do the same thing that the existentialism with existentialists would do, but I'm not coping. I'm not uh, rebelling. I'm not uh, I'm not saying no. I'm saying yes. And I think uh, we post existentialist we we just take existentialism to a step further. Okay, so your claim is that um, existentialists. Mm -hmm. Mainly Sartre, not all. Sartre, Mainly okay, Sartre. yeah, yeah, we're talking about Sartre. Um, are, he, coined, he coined the term, he coined the term. Oh, okay, yeah, because the, cause the pre previous philosophers who we now call existentialists didn't Think of themselves in that way. Exactly. Right. Using that, using that, using that, yeah. using that so word. So forth. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm just trying to understand uh, your your claim here. Um, your so your belief, your claim is that existentialists, the Sartre type existentialists, are are reacting to the um, discomfort or the shock of realizing that they are free of losing mm -hmm. the uh, the crutches the the, re the religious crutches the moral crutches and mm -hmm. and so your claim is that they react to that um under pressure and in some way uh feel a, a necessity or an obligation or a need to save themselves from this terrible plight by by constructing a new uh, self-designed reality is that is that what you're saying yes Mm -hmm. we, we're, we're trying to tra it's all about transcendence because the existentialists they're still revolving around the concept of an a priori right right if you say that there's no a priori but you're still acting because of that then yeah. you're still acting in response to an a priori even though it's not even there so you're saying that if if I realize that morality is not a priori, or God is not a priori, or religious beliefs are not a priori, and uh, so now I'm an existentialist, and um, uh, and and so now I'm going to purposely uh, reject all of those things, and and act in complete disregard for God, morality, and religion, then you're saying mm -hmm. that is not post-existentialism because I'm reacting. To the very mm -hmm. thing that I'm denying, and so yeah. I, I think, yeah. So I'm going to elaborate. I think what you're saying is, is that it's a contradiction to deny the existence of something, but still be operating in relation to the thing that you're claiming doesn't exist. Is that right? Hundred percent. You you got it. You got it. 100%. Yeah. Put that down as my contribution right? to your theory. Um, All right. But I'm going to remain the so, skeptic here. The question is, is that I, really what's happening? If I if that's what's happening, there is a contradiction. But if I am acting now in an open space, uh, then why why am I reacting to an a priori 
concept that doesn't exist or a thing that doesn't exist if it's really gone and I'm just operating in an open space. If I'm in a, if, if I'm in a field and there's, a, and there's trees everywhere, I'm in a forest, right? There, there's trees mm -hmm. everywhere. And so my ability to navigate through that forest is limited by where there's open space because there's so many trees yeah. in my way. Let's suppose mm -hmm. uh, somebody, come and, somebody uh, comes while I'm sleeping and cuts all the trees away. And all that's left is a big open field. Right, so the trees represent the uh, a priori. A priori, stuff that, okay. that existentialists reject. It's all gone now, cut down. It's all gone. Yeah. So, so, mm -hmm. so you, now I'm giving you a different analogy, and I want you to defend your theory against this analogy, sure. which is rather than reacting to the trees, mm -hmm. I'm simply in an open space. There are no more trees. So why isn't, that, why isn't it that Sartre is simply saying when God goes away, there when, is, when morality goes yeah. away, there's an empty space? Why, why is what the, you're saying true? Why would I be reacting to God or morality when it's actually gone? Because there's still one more place that the tree resides in. Yeah. And it's right in your mind. <laughs> okay. It's, Good answer. I'm, 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 I'm serious. You know, answer, yeah, I'm yeah. serious. If, if, yeah, if you're saying, oh my God, the trees are gone. Uh, what do I do? I guess I'm just going to, uh, you know, try to see if this works okay this is my meaning now i'm gonna run in circles now because that's my meaning because there's no more trees i can do that then you're still uh um you're still fighting in a re reactive manner right okay. and so but then once you fully embrace the fact that there's no trees um then you're in a more, more post existentialism existentialist manner and the thing is it it there's also the concept of the aspect, so I'm sorry, the aspect of how the existentialists, they're not, they're not creating their meaning for its own sake. They're creating their meaning, as I said before, in response to it. So what that means is um, it's the, their whole um, existential identity depends on the fulfillment of their meaning. We do not. We don't depend on that. What we depend on is literally just the fight the fight to uh, assert our meaning because we don't seek to make it permanent we don't seek to uh make it eternal nothing like that we just seek to do it because we have real we have made the choice that whatever we do the running around the field is uh our uh, meaning let's say so our existential identity lies in the running it's not in the running because of no trees it's not in the running because I want to run forever. It's in the running. Okay, so uh, Sartre does say, I think this would be supportive of your theory, Sartre does say that uh, that it is an obligation of people to not, to, to, to not flee their freedom. Uh, so, uh, so it, yeah, it's an obligation uh -huh. to, to your... Well, that, he certainly implies that because because Sartre says that to, to not create meaning, so once you get once you go into that state of forlornness, to to do anything other than rebuild your own meaning. Mm -hmm. Now that you've rejected a priori prepackaged meanings, right? Those things are gone. Now there's an empty space. And Sartre indeed says that to do anything other than to recreate your own meaning would be fleeing mm -hmm. your freedom. You'd be fleeing your freedom. So Sartre does say, he, do, he does imply at least, that to do anything other than create a new meaning in that void would be the wrong thing to do. That you, you have an obligation as a human being to be a free human being and to fulfill your, 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 yeah. your, your freedom by creating new meaning. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think you are rejecting. Exactly. Yeah. Right, and what 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 you just uh, descri described of Satra, he called it uh, uh, bad faith, right? Yeah, in bad, bad faith, faith, inauthentic, mm -hmm. fleeing. Yeah. Yes. There's, yes, there's nothing wrong at the post existence. There's nothing wrong with that. If you are living in bad faith, but you are uh, fully uh, committed and embracing of it, and you know you're doing, and you know you're, um, um, you're doing it for its own sake. 
You are way 100% better than the existentialists who say, I created my own meaning because you're still coping, man. And it's there's there's to me, there's something really pathetic about that. The fact that you uh, it's almost like a medication now, right? You, you're uh, you're trying to medicate yourself through through the uh, pains of existential dread by convincing yourself that you created your own meaning. When really you're, you're retroactively coping against the fact that you can't bear the fact that you have no meaning. As opposed to existentialists, we like we we're beyond bearing it. We like it, we've completely let go of it, and we are doing uh, what we want to do. And in fact, um, like you want to know you want to know um, who the post existentialists are. Um, y- you can look. They're everywhere. They're, they're called kids who don't who don't ponder the, to themselves what's the meaning of life. No, they just do what they want to do and they do it for its own sake, right? That's post existentialism. And then uh, a lot of uh, a lot of us get corrupted by the feeling of anguish, and then we get even more corrupted by uh, coping against that. When really we have to return to that uh, childlike feeling. And this is where I, this is where at the beginning of the show, right, I said, I don't really know how the degree to which it is, uh, my philosophy is original. Because um, there are some originalities to it, but fundamentally, we don't know. Because Nietzsche talked a lot about this too, right? It's not, a, it's not without accident that he said that the uh, Ubermensch is almost childlike. Because um, to him, uh, the Ubermensch is someone that creates his own values for its uh, not, um, but creates his own values while also transcending the death of God. So there's the death of God, uh, which is, you know, the loss of a priori, objective morality, and all that jazz. Uh, and then we have to overcome ourselves because of that. And then once we do that, we do, we continue our lifestyle for its own sake. And that's where we're very similar. Um, now, in regards to your question about Satra and the uh, bad face, the inauthenticity, there's nothing wrong with it. If you want to be bad face, if you want to uh, constrain yourself, but you uh, do it for, for its own sake, I, I, I admire, I respect you more than the existentialists who, uh, who, who pretend, who pretend that they're free. 100%. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, test you a little bit more. Um, okay. uh, challenge you a little so bit you're more. You're still coming at it. You're you still challenge- coming oh, at yeah, it. Well, that's what you asked me to do that before the show. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah, mm-hmm. because when you're, uh, you're I'm, I'm starting to prepare you for when you're defending your um, your master's or your PhD sure. thesis, right? So uh, defend yourself, defend your theory against the assertion that mm-hmm. you are pr- promoting nothing less than nihilism, and and the way the reason I say that is because you yourself just said that. Well, um, ki- you know, ki- an example of post existentialists would be kids who just like do what they want. So why wouldn't mm-hmm. that also include like criminals and murderers and thieves and people who have no moral compass what's, what whatsoever and people that are acting like in, a, in a Hobbesian nature totally for their own uh, in their own self interest. And um, wh- why wouldn't your theory um, embrace those people and give permission to those people uh, to do whatever they want? And before you answer, let me just um, distinguish uh, that idea from what I believe both Nietzsche and Sartre said. So Nietzsche, in his uh, you know, The Death of, of God, um, uh, you know, expose, by any interpretation that I've heard, was not advocating for nihilism. That's one of the accusations made against mm-hmm. Nietzsche. But the, all the scholars I've read said, no, that's not what he's doing at all. He's He may be rejecting, you know, organized religion and the dogma of the church, but not advocating meaninglessness. And Sartre then takes it further, right? He Sartre really goes into more detailed explanation of what should take the place what takes the place of a priori moral systems and God. And and so um, that is what Sartre describes as anguish. So so Sartre says that what happens in this void is not nihilism. So in the void that's created by rejecting a priori objective 
morality yeah. and so on, there is a yeah. void, and Sartre admits that. And he said, but I'm not a nihilist, or he's, he, he's, not, he's not a nihilist, because mm -hmm. he's saying that anguish then leads us to understand that since there is no objective morality and no God, that we, what we do, becomes the essence of the human race. It's yeah. Our, our yeah. actions become the essence of the human race, and I'm feeling anguish with that burden to know that if I... So if I rob and I kill and I cheat and I'm self-interested and, uh, and 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 malevolent to people, then I'm um, then again I'm fleeing my freedom, I'm fleeing my responsibility to the human race. So this is what takes the place: this anguish and the knowledge that that the human race is me. I am the human race. My actions become the actions of all people and become the essence of humanity. That is what replaces nihilism and that is what drives me to act in a conscious way. So now back to you. In your yeah. theory, what would proscribe someone from just being a completely self-interested Hobbesian murderer, for example? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you said two things. Yeah. Um, you said... Um, the self-interest to all that jazz, and then you mentioned how Satra uh, was, you know, going at it from a more collective approach, uh, right? Uh, my essence is, represents the uh, hu entire humankind, whatever. Those are very, two different things. I have to give two very different answers. Mm -hmm. um, well, no, uh, for, for your uh, first uh, questions, there's post-existentialism is totally okay with that. Because, as I said, it's not what you do, it's why you do it. If um, you think that that is the meaning that you choose, then you go right ahead. Um, the the Joker from The Dark Knight, um, you could say that he's a post-existentialist. Um, he has his own values and he lived by it. That's that's what it is. Um, if you want to be a, 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 a peace-loving, uh, very uh, calm, uh, not intrusive person, and you think there's meaning in that, you go right ahead too. Um, so... It, it, it really matters why you do it, not what you do. Um, as for the uh, whole um, sa uh, Satra thing, uh, you know, I, I have very uh, strong disagreements with that because uh, both Nietzsche and Satra said, you know, we, we're, uh, we're going to reject the original or, uh, uh, objective orthodoxy and we're going to reject declining into nihilism. But then they, but then they very prescribe two different things. Nietzsche says uh, you uh, you create your own meaning, and it, it's a, it has to be life affirming, and you live by it. It's very similar to post existentialism. Uh, Satra says, um, uh, you know, he had a more humanistic approach. He had a more collective approach. I don't believe that. I don't think that uh, if if you're if you think that your meaning should be uh, for your for the collective, you you do it. But you have to do it for its own sake. If you um, think that it should be individualistic, uh, like me, then you do that. But you have to do it for its own sake. Um, and I think that someone who is uh, uh, condemned f to be free, but then has to uh, uh, do it for the humankind in general, he's not free. He's, he's, he's con condemned to be unfreeness because now he, his uh, meaning has a uh, certain... Uh, uh, rules now, right? So you can create your own meaning, but you have to fill some obligations. You have to be for the humankind. You have to be uh, authentic. You have to be this and that. No, the only one we have is, right? And we have all these things. So are you really free? Are you really living by your own meaning, right? So I think that post existence is way more free because the only rule that we have is you have to really be free. If, if you break that rule, then you're not free. But the Satra existentialists say, uh, "Yeah, uh, you're condemned to be free, but you're gonna do all. You're gonna have to fulfill all these things that makes you unfree. Once you fu fulfill all these things that makes you unfree, you are now free." It doesn't make sense to me. Okay, um, I get what you're saying. That was very well articulated, and uh, and it and it's scary to me what you're saying. And I'll t uh, let me make another analogy. I'm gonna I'm gonna invoke uh, Hobbes. Uh, in an interesting in interesting way here. So Hobbes, of cool. course, uh, started out with uh, his uh, hypothetical theoretical state of nature, mm -hmm. where uh, it was a war of all against all, and uh, uh, pe people, um, in his view, in this hypothetical state of nature, um, were, were out for themselves. They were self-interested. 
Um, there was no morality. There were no rules. It was might makes right. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, uh, uh, of course, Hobbes um, rejected this as, a, as an appealing way to live. He, uh, Hobbes you know, used this hypothetical state of nature as, the, uh, as a premise in his argument that humans need to overcome this um, terrible state of nature. We don't actually want to live in that state. And so what we do is we need to organize and create a, a political state with laws and mm -hmm. rules and enforcement and agreements with each other. And, uh, you know, he went further and said, well, he actually said we need to have, a, you know, a, a, a leviathan, you know, a, a essentially a dictator yeah, yeah. that we that we entrust to make decisions for us in order to protect us from this, uh, collectively protect us from this undesirable state of nature. So now, uh, now I'm going to um, make an analogy here. And and I'm, you're free to uh, either say, oh, you're right, Michael, or or you know defend defend otherwise. But it sounds to me like like your post existentialism is is not only describing but advocating this Hobbesian state of nature where people are truly free and there's no morality and there's no no rules and people do whatever they want and the strongest wins and the weakest loses, and uh, and and uh, whereas uh, Sartre. Uh, you know, we can argue about Nietzsche, but definitely Sartre, like Hobbes, does not see this self-interested nihilistic state as a desirable place to be. And Sartre proposes a way of reconstructing uh, guidelines for behavior, which which have to do with sure. um, the you know the the anguish that you have knowing that your actions become the essence of the human race. So here's my challenge. Uh, here's my challenge to you, um, uh, Kohei, Kohei is uh, is uh, are you advocating a Hobbesian state of, of war, of all against all? No, because I'm, I'm advocating that uh, we assert our, we assert and align ourselves with our meaning, which doesn't necessarily mean war against all. If it just so happens that our own meaning that we choose uh, is peaceful and cooperative, then it's not a war against all. If it happens to be uh, uh, com com combative, then it is. And I want to address the uh, when you told me uh, my view is you used two adjectives adjectives back to back. You told me it was uh, self interest and nihilistic. Okay, so my view isn't post existentialism isn't nihilistic because nihilism is the lack of in objective and in uh, subjective meaning into uh, uh, existence. Uh, we deny, like like the normal existentialists, we deny objective meaning, but we do not deny subjective. Uh, we, we do believe that we can uh, uh, make our subjective meaning. So we're not noticed. Mm -hmm. As for the self-interested goal, that's a me basis. That is my personality. Uh, I, I am, I am uh, by nature that way. There are people who are higher in agreeableness. They are uh, not as self-interested as me. They are more communal, they are more uh, agreeable, they get along more. Now, for the uh, Hobbes, uh, w w what I want to address that many people don't understand about uh, what you, Hobbes is, you said that um, uh, Mike makes right and so there's combat, so we're going to have a uh, uh, imposed peaceful society so that that combat doesn't take place, right? Hmm. What do you need to make that peaceful society? You need the might. You, you you need the power to make that peaceful society. If you want to protect, if you want to be protected, if you want to be defended, de uh, defended from the dangers, if you want to see us be safe from the dangers, you have to have the strength to do that. You have to be might. You have to be mighty. Sorry. So which which then leads back to might makes right. So r r really, um, you can't just you you can't really say, oh, does my um. Uh, post existence existentialist uh, uh, philosophy advocate for a uh, super com uh, destructive, mutually destructive war against all? Not necessarily. It advocates, not it, it doesn't even advocate, it accepts might makes right. And it ex and by doing so, it implies that it can be a war against all or it can be peaceful. Just depends on which one's more, uh, has a more mighty foundation. Yeah, but you're, you're leaving it up to. You know everybody on his or her own uh, to uh, 
you know, to create his or her own her own reality, and 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 uh, and then you're just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm challenging you here, okay? <laughs> you're you're sort of mm-hmm. copping out and saying, well, it, maybe it'll be a peaceful society, and maybe it won't. It just depends on what people. I'm not copping should... out. I've I've been saying that from the start. <laughs> I know, but but you're you're copping out of from the question of how do we organize a society such that such that we have peace and so, and we have and 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 people are happy living there. How do we create? happiness for people and then and and and, and Sartre has an answer to that but but you yeah, you know well, but your your answer is well I don't know it's like whatever people decide to do <laughs> yeah because I I'm I'm more uh, I'm more in advoc- because as as soon as you um advocate for a some kind of permanence right a peaceful permanence uh you're not post existentialist I'm sorry but you're not now now you're striving for a uh, afterworldly ideal uh, and it is it is things like this that makes you uh, uh, an existential dread in the first place, because then you re- because then once you, because when these ideals fall, fall, you your existential reason for living existential reason for living uh, falls falls with it. And so the post existentialist comes in and says, wait a minute, no, you were supposed to live for the sake of constructing what you wanted to do. You were, if you wanted peace, you had to live for the sake of constructing peace. If you wanted war, you had to live for the sake of constructing war. And I, I know it sounds ugly, but like it is what it is. I, I'm oh, not yeah, okay. advocating okay. for any. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not advocating for. I would, you know, advocating is a strong word because I know that most people won't be able to be post-existentialist. So I'm not forcing everyone to be that way, which means that most people are probably going to conform and, you know, uh, live by someone else's meaning or live for a higher meaning, uh, which is just a cope. So it's like in theory, in theory, yeah, it can be as ugly as you describe it. But in practice, no, it's, it's really not. So I, I, you know, I get I think I get what you're saying. OK, so let, let mm-hmm. me see if I'm correctly representing what you're saying. Your your claim, in summary, is that existentialism, especially that um, elucidated by Sartre, Sartre is uh, in a way it's intellectually dishonest, because yep. what your claim is that is that Sartre claims to be rejecting uh, all a priori structures and uh, uh, and uh, enabling humans to be completely free. Um, uh, but you're saying it's dishonest because what he what Sartre does is he puts another structure in its place. So uh, mm-hmm. so Sartre rejects uh, uh, God and religion and and uh, Kantian morals and all that, and says we need it to reject all humanism. that. Yeah, that okay. That's your claim. So your claim is is that the, the post existentialist. I'm not saying I agree with your viewpoint. I'm just being I'm being um, uh, making sure I understand it right. And I, I think yeah. it's, it's a great theory, you know. I, I think it, 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 anyway. I'm not great. offended. Dude. You don't have to show. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure that I, you know, uh, that I uh, subscribe to it or that I would want the mm-hmm. the world to be like this. But uh, but it is important that I understand it because I have a lot of respect for you and this theory. I really do. It, I think it's very well thought out. And um, uh, and and every theory is subject to bombarding. You know, bombardment scrutiny. of criticisms and scrutiny, and there's not one theory, <laughs> philosophical theory or otherwise, social theory in this universe that um, is immune or exempt from, uh, you know, from objections, right? Uh, so, mm-hmm. uh, uh, so I'm helping you strengthen your theory with my objections. Yeah. But, but, uh, sure. so what? You, but, I, but I do want to make sure I understand it because that's part of philosophy is truly understanding the arguments. Um, mm-hmm. of, of another, uh, and then if I can overcome those or object to the, yes. the your strongest the argument, steel man in it. Yeah. that's, a, that's steel a, man in Socrates, it. right? Socrates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, I need to I need to be able to respond to your, to your strongest arguments. I want to make sure that I'm helping you make your strongest argument here. So, so uh, Sartre puts humanism in the place of uh, of, of a rejected uh, a priori moralities. And uh, is intellectually dishonest when he states that humanism is nothingness, <laughs> right? That out of nothingness comes must come humanism. Although he doesn't use the word humanism, I don't think. But you're saying it's humanistic, and I, in some ways it is, in the sense that Sartre talks about I I bear the burden of all yeah. humanity I mean, in my he actions. Wrote a, yeah, he wrote a book called Existentialism, Humanism. So oh, right, he did right, right. It. Yeah, he did say you did. Yeah. Right, you're right. You're right about that. Um, 
Okay, so what? But post existentialism, what you're promoting, uh, yeah. you're claiming is the true existentialism. Um, it's the intellectually honest and consistent existentialism, because it it Got literally it, it literally um, rips apart all preconceived notions and a priori uh, structures and puts mm-hmm. in its place nothing, <laughs> nothing. It's whatever you truly want to put yes. there. And so your claim mm-hmm. your claim is that that is the true existentialism. Yeah, you you know you, you know whenever you add an ism to something, right? <laughs> so whenever you when it, if there's capitalism, um, it's you know it's for the sake of the capital. If it's existentialism, it's for the sake of existence. And the post-existentialism is for the sake of existential uh, ex- existing. I would call myself an existentialist, but that na- but that label it has been taken, it has been tarnished, and it has been bastardized. So I'm stuck with post-existentialism. Um, the silver lining is a it's a it's a cool and edgy name, so I'll run with it. Now, yes, as to uh, what uh, uh, you as to when you when you wanted to clarify me with me, if you understood me by explaining uh, Satra's uh, intellectual dishonesty, yes, you're correct. That is 100% my point. Uh, you, you hit you hit the bullseye there, and so I believe you are going to say that you have some problem with it. Which I could probably, uh, I, I'm pretty confident that I can, uh, I can uh, answer my way through. Well, uh, the problem I have, um, I expressed before, which is, why would I want to live in a world um, uh, which sounds to me quite Hobbesian? I mean, you know, you're you're, you're trying to distinguish it from. Hob- Hobbesian state of nature, but I don't you admit that yeah. it is in many ways similar oh. in that in that there are no there is no morality. Um, people, mm-hmm. oh. everyone um, has equal rights, which are basically all rights or no rights. There there are no there's no such thing as right. It's just you just do what you do. Isn't that what you're? Yeah, and so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and 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 it's very understandable that you don't want to live in one. And so you, you know what you do if you don't want to live in one, you you, you don't live in one. That's uh, or to the best that you can, uh, to the to the best that you can do, you don't live in one. And uh, people could say, "Well, that's not post-existentialist." Well, yeah, you're right. It's not post-existentialist because, as I said, it's it's not it's not as you are living proof of it. It's not compatible for the majority of society. It's I I I'm not a psychologist, but it's probably going to be compatible for the very uh, uh, how do you say the fringes of society. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not for everyone. Um, so now to answer your question, um, does it, uh, can it, does it, will it lead to such a, a dystopia? Probably not. Um, can it? Yeah. Um, now I'm by no means advocating that you just uh, abandon your, uh, uh, fears and just, uh, uh, live in such a society. No, if you don't want to live in one, then, uh, uh, then you better, you better, attain the might to not to uh, keep it that way I'm going to suggest another way of uh, looking at your theory sure. and uh, maybe you'll like it maybe you won't maybe you've thought of it maybe you haven't mm-hmm. but when I hear you talk um, I'm yeah. thinking about the is ought distinction that we learn in philosophy the distinction between what is and what ought to be the Hume's guillotine yes yeah and that comes up a lot with you know morality and that kind of thing and and uh, and and we, we we've learned in philosophy about how people often make a mistake and that they confuse the two and uh, just because the world is a certain way doesn't mean that it ought to be a certain way so for example like that comes up sometimes when um in in the question of morality like is morality objective and uh, mm-hmm. people will say, well, morality is not objective because if you just look at the world, you'll see that in different countries and different societies, people have different moral rules. But then the mm-hmm. response to that is, well, what you're describing when you say the world has different societies with, you know, in some societies they, you know, they, uh, they, they practice infanticide or, you know, Hitler did what Hitler did. Um, you, that's an empirical observation. That's the way the world is. But that doesn't entail the way the world ought to be morality is is prescriptive it's a it's a it's a description of the way the world ought to be it's it's not a claim about the way the world is so now i'm going to get bit now i'm having said that i want to get to your your theory the theory about post-existentialism it sounds to me like you're saying 
that you are just describing the way the world is. You're, you're not saying yeah. that you, you're not saying you be, that the world ought to be a Hobbesian, mm-hmm. um, you know, mm-hmm. Hobbesian state of war of all against all. You're saying that people will, you know, may they may decide to create meaning, which for themselves, which results in a different kind of world. You're not advocating for how the world ought to be. It sounds to me like you're just describing the way things are. You're saying that yeah. as you, you're agreeing with Nietzsche and Sartre that that religion and religious dogma and God and the idea of objective morality and moral, moral facts, that's all nonsense. It sounds like you're agreeing with Nietzsche and Sartre to that point. Um, but then you're it's saying... There's a in there, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, and other and others. Um, you're just saying, yeah, they're right. It's that's all nonsense. Um, and, but then you stop. You say, okay, so it's nonsense. And then you know, then Sartre, for example, like reconstructs um, a, a humanism out of that void. And you're saying, well, there goes another. You know, they're they're doing it again. They're just creating another. You know, con, uh, construction. Dogma. But what? But mm-hmm. what? What the way the world actually is is people don't. You know, some people believe it and some don't. You know, some people believe in stuff that's made up and some don't, and the world will be whatever people create. So it sounds to me like you're decide you're just describing, you're making an almost an empirical statement. Yeah. Um, and and whereas a Sartre, from your point of view, is 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 going into the ought, the way the world ought to be. People ought Correct. to. Uh, out of this anguish, people ought to recreate a sense of responsibility, yeah. a sense of, mm-hmm. of, 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 you know, beneficence rather than malevolence. And that's what you're rejecting as being antithetical to true existentialist um, mm-hmm. concepts. Is that right? Yeah. And so um, that's basically you, you hit the uh, you, you hit the bullseye again. Right. So when I say whenever I say you ought to do something. I, I, I will never say it on its own. I will always say in context to something, right? So I will say, if you truly want to live to the full extent, you ought to uh, live the post-existentialism way. Uh, if you ought to, uh, if you want to cope against your suffering, then you ought to just be an existentialist. So that's fine, right? And people still use um, existential, existentialism as a cope, um, you know, along with, you know, hyper-consumerism, uh, commodified spirituality, all that stuff that uh, lets us dehumanize our, uh, demitigate, mitigate our suffering and such as a cope. And you know, uh, if you want to, if that's all you want to do, then fine, be an existentialist. But if you want something more, if you want to uh, rise uh, above that and live for its own sake, right? Tr- just truly uh, give the term "exist" a good name then be a post-existentialist. So, yeah, no, you're 100% right. Um, I'm not saying it should be that way. I'm saying it is that way. And the reason why it is that way is because Mike makes right. So um, I got that, and I, I'm going to try one more time to uh, challenge okay. you, and um, because I'm still not convinced that you're properly understanding or representing Sartre's argument. Um, so let me let me try and articulate what Sartre's argument might be in a different way. So, anguish. I'm feeling anguish. So I've I've come to reject organized religion, God, a priori moral codes, and I'm left with this this like space. Um, mm-hmm. I believe that a void. a void. But I believe that it, what Sartre is saying is not that. Oh, therefore I. I don't like this void. I better like find something new to believe. Humanism. No, I don't think Sartre is saying that. I think what he's arguing is that that's the default natural thing that emerges when 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 the uh, when when the um, external um, stuff, the a priori stuff, when all that nonsense goes away, then what's left is is uh, is this is this sense of wow. My actions have meaning, but they're not meaningful in the way I thought they were. They're meaningful because I'm a human, and that's all there is. So what? Yeah, I, do you know yeah, what I'm I saying? Give it so, yeah. So what if what if Sartre isn't advocating the reconstruction of a new religion, humanism, but is just saying mm-hmm. that when it's when the when the trees are all cut down, you just have dirt. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that he that, didn't that construct the dirt. He didn't construct the dirt. Mm-hmm. It's just there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that goes back to my original point because 
before we talked about uh, a reconstruction, we talked about reaction, right? Mm-hmm. We talked about rebellion. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned how the, the trees that were cut down, they were still in one more place. And that place is in your mind. Mm-hmm. And so, right. So even if you do all the things that the post-existentialists do, uh, you could be doing it the same way as the uh, existential exi- as you could be doing the same thing as the existentialists do. Mm-hmm. But if it's if it's in response to some fear, right? If it's in response to some revolving around the fact that there are no trees, your emotional reaction to it, then you are an existentialist. And you are still reacting as if the, <laughs> you are still reacting as if the trees are still there because it is still affecting you. Even if the trees are gone, it's still affecting you. And so, if it's affecting you, then you are not free in the sense that you are not living for your own sake, and so you are not living completely independent. And therefore, you cannot fully and ima- uh, you cannot fully ad- adhere to your creative ideals. Okay. So what you're saying is, and this is the part that gets scary for me. So let's say that yes. uh, uh, that uh, I've rejected external morality, I've rejected God, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I'm at this critical juncture. What do I do now? What what now would govern my behavior? Why why wouldn't I uh, go out and steal from somebody or kill somebody to get their you know get their money, or kill someone because I don't like the person? What would stop me from doing that? So uh, I'm at this juncture. So it sounds like if what naturally comes up in me is to treat people with respect, if what naturally, not as a response or a, re- a rebellion or a reaction to feeling this uh, this anguish at my freedom or this forlornness or angst about my lack of direction but if what naturally comes up in me is this desire to be good to people and to respect people then that's fine that's consistent with post existentialism because that's what came up within me naturally but on the other hand Mm -hmm. if i said wow this is really scary not having any moral compass i'm afraid i'm going to do something terrible i better like create my own morality and i better do it by realizing that i'm the essence of humanity and what i do is what humankind does and that's going to be what guides me Phew, i feel so much better i was afraid i was going to go out and kill somebody but now i'm not going to because i am the bear the burden of humanity that w- that is what you're saying is 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 not post existentialism because i'm simply acting in reaction to the fear of what i've rejected so is that mm-hmm. am i right so far yep yep yeah so if that's true why is that a good thing why, why do you want to live in a world where people could say i'm free i can start killing people now and and i mean why is that okay with you why is that cool with post existentialism <laughs> well it's not cool with me personally yeah no it's but why it's 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 it, 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 it aligns with post existentialism but it's not cool with me right but why why is it cool with you to let other people decide what's cool for them if what's cool for them is killing you. I said it's, I said it's, I said it's not cool for me because now right. it's, it's, no, but it's, for them. it's against my self-interest. Right, but if another yeah, no, no. person... It's, 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 not, it's not cool for me that they get to choose how they live because it's okay. against my self-interest. So, so if, if it's against my self-interest, then it's also against my uh, me, uh, uh, meaning in life. Right. If it com- this is why I said it's not for everyone. Because if it's for everyone, yeah. then not then uh, more and more people are going to uh, have have theirs conflicted. Now, um, in regards to the uh, oh, why can't I just do bad things? Well, I would I would uh, hit you with a curveball and say we are already like that. That's why we have uh, enforced laws and enforced police forces. Because they offer an incentive not to do those bad things, right? Um, because if, if the only thing, because you're making it sound like the uh, thing that's stopping us from committing crime is our conscience, our goodwill. Mm-hmm. If that was the case, we wouldn't need cops. We wouldn't need, you know, authority figures. We wouldn't need all that. We would just naturally conform in a uh, socially uh, healthy way. So... And then, so we we already live like the way I'm, I'm I'm prescribing it, and people know that. That's why they create these uh, police forces. And so, if you really want to do bad things, 
then well, you're going to either have to win over, you have to win that conflict, or as I said, you could succumb to it and embrace it, which means you're no longer uh, in reaction to it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think your criticism isn't that, I'm not saying you're not great. I'm saying that that's where the criticism really uh, stops because uh, first, because I'm not advocating that uh, necessarily that you do those bad things. And furthermore, um, I'm just pointing out that that's already what we kind of do. That's what right, we have the right. uh, police forces. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, so you're advocating for police forces to protect people. I'm not, I'm, I'm not advocating for police forces. Yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, it's I'm, it is. It's it is. Advoc I advocate. Yeah. Yes. It, advocating is yeah. all. Um, what I'm yeah. saying is that, that's how it is. That's what we have the police forces. Right. Okay. Um, I'll make my la my last statement in summary. Then then I'll give you your the last word because believe it or not, we're almost out of time. It sounds to me like like this this is fundamentally um, a dispute between um, those who believe that human nature is uh, uh, like innately. Um, Good, like, like it's almost like a dispute between those who believe in moral facts and those who don't. So it's almost mm -hmm. as though, as though, like Sartre claims that there. Are, I don't think he he would literally be considered a moral realist, but he is in a way saying that when you reject all the external stuff, what you're left with are, are, are is is this humanist, this default way that people would behave. Which is, um, you know, um, in in consideration and respect for others, and that's what emerges. But it sounds like you're denying that. You're you're saying that that's um, that 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 that's a, a, another uh, you know reconstruction of of. I wouldn't or, deny uh, if yeah. it really was the default. Right. If it really was, the, yeah. if you were naturally inclined to be that way, I wouldn't be yeah. against it. Yes, yeah, so you deny that people are naturally that way, right? I wouldn't be surprised either way. Okay. Um, Got it. What I'm yes. So what I'm saying is, as as the moment Satra says we have to, we ought to be that way, then I have issues. But okay. if Satra uh, says that's how we naturally are, and so we will naturally act that way, then I won't have issues. He might be incorrect, but right. I won't have issues with the philosophy. Um, now he's he's I don't I mean he wasn't really a sociologist or anything or a psychologist, so he probably wouldn't know if we were uh, default to, to be uh, have a humanistic approach. But yeah, no, that's that's my word on it. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, Kohei Yamamura, um, you, you are the post-existentialist, or maybe one of them, right? Yes. Um, uh, I, first I, to adopt the name, one of the first to adopt the name yes, yeah. in this context. So where can people uh, find out more about your, uh, your, uh, your work, your research, if they wanted to? Yeah, sure. So um, this has been recorded in uh, late December, but uh, I'm actually going to post this on my own. So if you're watching this on my channel, then you know what I'm talking about because it means that I posted it on my channel. So which means I don't have to tell you where to find it because you could just, you know, click the channel. Uh, but if you are uh, watching this from, uh, you know, my show, then it's then just scroll to the bottom and you'll see my YouTube. And that's where uh, you'll find me. My YouTube is the post existentialist. Yeah. And uh, starting January um, 2021, I'm going to post a lot of uh, content on that, what it is how it differs from other philosophies, how to apply it, uh, books, movies, media that uh, um, uh, manifests uh, that philosophy, all that jazz. So I'll be excited. Yeah, thank you. I'll post uh, the link to your uh, YouTube channel on the uh, uh, archive of this archive. Yeah, the, oh, yeah, the archive sure. of the show. And we do archive this show. This is the Canadian philosophy show. We do archive it on mixcloud.com. Uh, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll put uh, a note on this edition um, with your uh, information there, um, uh, Kohei. So thank you very much, Kohei Yamamura. And uh, my name is Michael Robert Kaditz. You've been listening to the Canadian Philosophy Show. It's on each week, Sunday evenings on CHLY in Nanaimo from 7 to 8 p.m. And also streaming on chly.ca. And as I said, the archives are on mixcloud.com. Thanks very much for listening. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay, I stopped that recording. You should see a message that it's on Gencaster. It looks like it's already uh, uploaded. I think it's done that successfully. I'll just double check yep. that. Okay, got it. So yeah. I just click it. Yep. And yeah. I can close the tab. Uh, one second. Make sure.
Yep, I got it. You can close, so I can close Zencaster. The yep, you can close Zencaster. I'm going to stop the YouTube.